We now consider rotational kinetic energy and angular momentum. Rotational kinetic energy and angular momentum were used to 1 half mv squared for the linear kinetic energy. But objects that are rotating, their center of mass is not moving, doesn't have a v. So we need to express the rotational kinetic energy. And it turns out it's 1 half i omega squared, in the same pattern. In the linear formulas, m gets replaced with i, the velocity gets replaced with omega. So 1 half i omega squared. So there's a motor here, there's torque in the system, and that uh, force times distance creates energy, gives the object some kinetic energy. If we have a force here, perpendicular some lever arm, generates a torque over a distance, that's work. Force over distance is work. So we have a uh, situation of creating energy, and uh, we're not changing the potential energy of this disk. It's not moving away from the Earth or closer to the Earth. So all the work goes to change the kinetic energy. And if the disk starts from rest, then the final kinetic energy will be 1 half i omega squared equal to the work that's uh, been done. So rotational kinetic energy, 1 half i omega squared. i is the rotational inertia. Depends on the shape of the object, what the value of i is. There are some buses that try to capture the linear kinetic energy into rotational kinetic energy. So there'll be a big flywheel mounted in the bus and with gears connected to the drive shaft of the bus. If the uh, uh, flywheel is engaged, it will take up energy from the linear motion and spin up and store kinetic energy here. And then there's a mechanism to uh, deliver that rotational kinetic energy back to the wheels and create linear kinetic energy. So it increases the uh, miles per gallon by not wasting the energy and just heating up the brakes but storing the energy, not in a battery like a hybrid car, but mechanically storing the energy in this uh, large flywheel. So Again, similar concept here. A person is uh, delivering force perpendicular lever arm, creates a torque, and creates angular acceleration. We get an angular velocity. We get kinetic energy. And now the hand is doing work on this uh, grindstone, delivering energy, and it gets into the form of kinetic energy. Interesting here, rolling down a plane, three different objects, and uh, their masses are identical. The first can, low friction coating, so the contents of the can don't spin. They just ride down the plane. In that situation, the liquid inside the can is not spinning up. So that liquid doesn't take up kinetic energy. And all the potential energy here, the mgh, is going into 1 half mv squared the linear kinetic energy going down the ramp. For can number three, that is uh, uh, more solid, in that situation we have the contents here spinning as the can rolls down the plane. And one half i omega squared, that's an energy. We've got a supply of energy, mgh. That mgh becomes one half i omega squared rotational kinetic energy plus one half i, well, sorry, one half m v squared. So the potential energy becomes rotational kinetic energy and linear kinetic energy. mgh equals one half i omega squared plus one half m v squared. And if the can has a significant value for i, then the rotational energy is going to be a larger number, leaving less energy for 1 half mv squared, and less uh, energy for the linear kinetic energy, then the v number will be smaller. And your instructor may do a demo of this. Again, uh, force and lever arm or created torque. We corrected F equals ma in one of the chapters and express this as F equals delta P over delta T. 
that the net external force creates a change in momentum. There is an angular momentum that we need to consider now. And a similar equation, the torque equals the change in angular momentum divided by the time. The angular momentum is calculated, not so linear momentum is calculated with m times v. The angular momentum is calculated with i, the rotational inertia, times the angular velocity, the omega in radians per second. Angular momentum is the rotational inertia multiplied by the angular velocity. And ice skaters and our illustrations at the very start of this PowerPoint, by redistributing the mass of the body, bringing it in closer to the axis, that decreases the value of I. If friction can be ignored, then the net external torque is zero, and I omega will equal I prime omega prime. So if I prime gets smaller, omega prime has to get bigger to keep L a constant. That's conservation of angular momentum. So I1 times omega1 equals I2 times omega2. This is angular momentum 1. This is angular momentum 2. This is valid as long as there's a net external torque of zero. So we don't want friction. We don't want someone external pushing on the uh, object that's rotating. Uh, we don't want a torque. So net external torque equals zero. In that situation, if we just redistribute the mass, so perhaps I put my arms outward while I'm spinning, that will make I2 larger. And as a consequence, omega-2 will get smaller. Conservation of angular momentum, I times omega, is a constant if the net external torque is zero. I times omega is a constant. Oh, well, this has applications in the world. Uh, one of those places would be in astronomy, the solar system, the planets, and the sun as uh, being formed here. As the gas collapses towards the center, it speeds up, conserving angular momentum. And we end up with planets in orbit around the sun, and the sun rotating, the planets rotating. There's some complications, but that's the basic picture. Now, the angular momentum is a vector, and its direction is a little bit unusual. It's not in the direction of motion. Instead, it's defined to be perpendicular to the direction of rotation. If you wrap your right hand, your fingers of your right hand, in the direction of rotation, then your thumb shows the direction of the angular momentum. And we're not going to concentrate on this in my course, but we will do a little demo in class with a bicycle wheel. Um, that is somewhat interesting. Um, so here we have uh, torque being created, and that torque creates a change in angular momentum. So the torque is perpendicular to the plane of the merry-go-round. The angular velocity vector is perpendicular. Angular momentum is perpendicular. Here's a person with a bicycle wheel, and I'll have one of these in my class. If we spin this up, it now possesses angular momentum. And if we just grab with one hand or suspend the bicycle wheel with a string with one hand, we'll see something interesting happen here. See if you can guess what's going to happen. The gravity, the center of gravity of this wheel is really back here. If we take off the left hand, the person's left hand, center of gravity is going down this way. That creates a torque, and that torque um, is going to be into the, the picture here and you're going to see the bicycle wheel turn horizontally. You, you let go of your left hand, the bicycle wheel does not drop down vertically. Instead it moves in a horizontal plane around the uh, axis where the right hand is. So we'll, we'll do a little demo of that in my class. Um, gyroscopes, or toy uh, little top you might have spun them up and you notice as the rate of spin decreases, as friction causes omega to get smaller, there's a noticeable wobble of the gyroscope. And that's called precession. The torque causes a sideways uh, addition, delta L, change to the angular momentum. And the top moves around in a wobbling uh, kind of circle. Um, 
Just briefly on competition bicycles, they're made with a low value of I to reduce the kinetic energy tied up in rotational kinetic energy. Instead, when they pump the pedals, they want the energy to go into one half mv squared, the linear kinetic energy. Again, an example of an astronomy of gas moving uh, maybe towards a, a, a compact object here and uh, will spin up as it does so. Not uh, just uh, gymnastics or ice skating, but diving. If the angular, sorry, the rotational inertia is small, omega gets to be large. Extend the body out, then the I value is large, and the omega will become small. Standing on ice, someone throws you a ball. As you catch it, you're going to conserve angular momentum. It turns out this ball has an angular momentum mv times r, where r is the... Uh, distance away from the axis of rotation. And now when the ball is captured, we have a whole system here that has a certain I value and will have a certain omega. The Earth uh, does not keep a constant direction of its polar axis uh, out into space on the sky. Instead, there's a gravitational pull from the Moon on the Earth creating a torque and our axis is, is tilted 23 and a half degrees, that gives us the seasons, but this axis is not pointed towards a constant point in the sky. Right now it's pointed towards Polaris, the North Star, but the Earth wobbles like a top. The only difference being it's a very slow wobble. It takes 26,000 years for the North Pole to trace around a circle on the sky through the constellations. It takes 26,000 years. We live in an interesting time when Polaris is near the place where our North Pole points to, but that was not always the case. The pyramids were built lined up with a different North Star. So here's what happens. The Earth is spinning and uh, creates out this uh, point on the north on this northern sky where our North Pole points to. It uh, traces around this circle. Earth wobbles like a top. And that was 26,000 years going around there. Another view, our celestial sphere here with the constellations and just showing the polar axis of the Earth and tracing around a path on the sky. So at different, uh, different thousands of years, different stars are the North Star. But it's all due to physics. So there's our um, end here for the consideration of rotational kinetic energy, one-half I omega squared, and the conservation of angular momentum. I times omega is a constant if the net external torque is equal to zero. So you should keep studying with that and ask some questions.